Most photographers are hesitant to leave their day job to do photography full time, and I get it. I get the idea of wanting security. I wasn't always a full time professional photographer. I too had a day job, but I want to talk about that here in this video because if you're having that fear of leaving your day job to do photography full time, a couple things. One, it's obscuring reality. I want to talk about that. It's also an unfounded fear, but more so, there's some recent news that I want to share that I think will really change your mind about this. And I'm going to get to that in just a little bit later on in the video. I need to preface that though with a few things. One, if you're even thinking about doing photography full time, if you've even considered it, then more than likely deep down inside, you're probably already fairly well convinced that's something you want to do. It's something that's driving you to make a change. It's something that you can see down the road, but the obscurity of this reality that photography won't make you money and that you need the security of a day job, that's probably holding you back. It shouldn't because like I said, this is largely unfounded. As a professional photographer doing this full time, I can tell you that it's not always going to be easy, but if you do this right, if you do follow the right steps before, during, and being, and even after becoming a professional real estate photographer or a professional photographer in any genre, that it is rewarding. You can do this right. You can have a career doing this. Too many people though give up on that. And as you probably know, I've been doing this a long time. I've been a professional real estate photographer in Southern California for many years. I've shot literally thousands of homes. I've worked for hundreds of clients. And I can tell you that sure, it wasn't always easy, but has it been rewarding? Yes, because I wasn't always a full-time real estate photographer. But nowadays I have a very steady income, even in down markets because of the demand for me. Now that's not to pat myself on the back. That was just making some good business sense along the way. And, and that's the thing that's lacking a lot of times if you're thinking about making this switch to becoming a full-time photographer, real estate, portrait wedding, whatever it is, being that full-time photographer does rely on some business sense, but this isn't rocket science. To be able to run a professional real estate photography business or a professional wedding photography business, whatever the genre might be. But the biggest thing, the number one biggest thing that brought me to where I am now after making the switch was that fear. That's what drove me to stay hungry and to get out there and get the work that I needed to do, not take shortcuts but to get the work that I needed to do, to get better at the work that I needed to do, to be able to prove myself to clients, to be able to get their work, to be higher in demand. And even after many years of doing it, I still have that fear now. And some of that's very healthy. It's healthy to have a certain amount of fear if you realize what that fear is doing and if it's driving you in the right direction. And this isn't meant as some rah-rah speech, motivational thing of you can change your life with three simple steps. It isn't that way at all because we have to take a look at that fear. There's actually a fear that you have that is being covered up. It's something of the lack of fear. And the lack of fear that you have in a false sense of security in your day job is actually going to do more harm than if you were to try to take control of the situation and be a professional photographer or some other type of entrepreneurship where you're in control of the situation. So this lack of fear, this complacency of thinking that you have job security is an illusion. And I know that. As you may know from other videos that I've done in the past, so for many years, I wasn't always a full-time professional photographer I was actually an engineer and a meteorologist. And I did that for a long time and I felt very secure in my work. I felt that there is nothing that could possibly go wrong. I'm gonna be high in demand. I've got a trade, I've got these skills. I can keep getting work. And my coworkers felt the same thing. Let's go buy that new house. Let's buy a bigger car. Let's spend the money that we have because we had this lack of fear, but that lack of fear and that complacency then led to detriment later on because eventually, especially working as an engineer in tech, 
your job is replaced very quickly because the companies are constantly changing. And every time for more than one company I worked for, when there was a reduction in force and they had layoffs, myself, my coworkers, that all of us who got laid off during these big reductions in force, well, we were unprepared and it became a traumatic shock, something that we weren't expecting because we had this false sense of security that working this day job, that's not a problem. We don't have to worry about that. But if you really had the real fear of that job, knowing that you could get laid off at any time, that's the same fear, if not more fearful, than if you were to become, for instance, a full-time photographer and take control of your career and be able to guide the ship yourself. There is no day job out there that can guarantee you your future and a fruitful tomorrow. It just doesn't exist. I don't care what they do for your yearly reviews and these token raises that you may get every year, or they may throw some stock options at you and make you feel that you're very secure in your job. It's all an illusion. I can tell you that from experience. So by now being a full-time real estate photographer, I can see how the business is changing. There are people that are asleep at the wheel in large corporations and don't realize it's too late until the Titanic's about to hit an iceberg. And that happens a lot. It's something that you can't control. But if you were guiding that ship, and if you had that proper amount of fear, that fear of tomorrow, what it will bring, you're gonna be more aware of what's going on. You have the opportunity to be able to say, I need to change course. There are some things changing with the add-ons, for instance, in real estate photography. Maybe I need to learn more video. Maybe I need to change how I'm doing videos. Maybe I need to change how I'm doing my style of photography. For instance, a great one, uh, HDR photography was real popular many, many years ago of just cranking stuff out of automated software, for instance, like Photomatics and stuff like that. Well, that changed quite a bit. And you know, the flambient technique has really taken off and that's become popular and actually demanded by a lot of clients. Even if they didn't, even if you disagree with that, that's good, that's fine. Because it shows me and it should show yourself that if you were to do this full time, you make the decisions. You decide what you're going to do tomorrow. You decide what skills you wanna learn, practice and promote. And then you can take full control of your career. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's some big news that I think will help change your mind. And I wanna to get to that in just a second. But before you do, and even consider things like that, is you do have to consider one big thing before you change into any career. And that's to make sure that you're good enough to get the work. If you were gonna open up a restaurant and you didn't know how to cook very well, then what's the sense of opening a restaurant to do that, you need to have the skills. Now, luckily that's something I can help you out with. Now, as you may know, I have online video courses and I've got books that all relate to real estate photography. And I've got links to all that down in the description for this video. If you're interested in the online courses, also look for the interior bundle, which will save you some money off that as well. But these tools are there, not for me to just pitch and say, hey, you should buy my books, you should watch my videos. They're there to also help you succeed. And that's no BS. The reason why I came up with my books, the reason why I came up with my courses is because I had a lot of real estate photographers who came to me and said, how do you do this? Well, I started making tutorials here on my YouTube page, but it just wasn't enough. So I came up with these instruction manuals. I came up with these very comprehensive to the point uh, courses also. And links once again down in the description for the video, but there was a person who drove me to do this and there's some news here. And the news is about this person who drove me to do this. And it was my friend and drone pilot, Jonathan Dannenfelser, who Jonathan the drone guy, as he was known out here in LA, we worked together for many years and he died uh, about two months ago. He was only 43 years old. He left three young children and it was shocking. It left a hole in a lot of people's lives. Very hard thing to still swallow. I still think today even it's like, oh, come be at a job. It's like, oh, I can't wait to show Jonathan this. And then, I, oh, that's right. He's not here anymore. 
And Jonathan pushed me, especially with the courses. He's going, you got to put those courses out there. People want these courses. You've got the knowledge. You need to share this stuff. And so I did. And he's not here anymore. And so every day now, it reminds me that how short life really is. And Jonathan used to be successful in real estate. So he changed to doing nothing but drone and videography. And I would do all his photography work. We would share the videography work. Anyways, long story, as you may know, I'd mentioned him throughout many videos of all the work that we would do. Mentioned him on social media with all the clips that we had done together. But the fact is, Jonathan took that leap, like I did also at one point in my career where I wasn't happy with the work that I was doing. And it's a matter of asking yourself this one question, and we would say this quite often, if not now, when? When? I mean, seriously, you don't know if you're going to be here tomorrow. The day job you're in, they can't even guarantee you a job tomorrow, and you can't guarantee that you'll still be with everybody tomorrow. You can't guarantee what life is going to bring and you will diminish what you can have in your control for your life if you let somebody else make all your decisions. I loved photography. I didn't want to sit inside of a cubicle any longer. Being an engineer and meteorologist, I didn't want to do that. I really loved photography since I was a little kid. And Jonathan used to be a pilot, just part-time, a real pilot with real planes, not just drone. And we wanted to pursue our dreams. When we did meet many years ago, we were both in the same boat of changing careers, doing this stuff, and we both had that same mindset, and that's how we had that chemistry to be able to work together and do the things that we did. That's why I just want to share with you this news as motivation, that this is a time to really strongly consider if you're going to be making the move. And if you think for a second that I'm doing this to promote my courses and books, you're partially right. Because Jonathan's the guy who told me to do that, to be able to make those courses, to be able to push this out there. And why? Yes, there was a business opportunity there, but also because he knew that the knowledge was there. And if you shared it with enough people, that they could also pursue their dreams the same way we did. Now, I'm not saying once again that this is a Tony Robbins motivational, you can be like us if you follow these five steps. No, it's a matter of stopping the treadmill, stopping life, taking a look at what you're doing right now, and ask yourself, well, if not now, when? Are you happy with what you're doing? Do you want to make a change? And I wish there was a secret formula, a five-step plan, that you can just follow your dreams and change everything. But the fact is, it's hard work, right? But are you willing to do the hard work to be happier? And that comes into then thinking about a transition plan. So any business that you want to get into or any career change, you do have to think about a transition plan. Now, yeah, 10 bucks, download my ebook on business techniques, and and you'll see this viability option where you can price things out. I'm not diminishing my book. If you wanna get it, fine. I'll leave a link to that also in the description for the video. But beyond the viability, you have to think about broader things. What do you wanna do? You have to be ready if you wanna make a transition and be happier in your life You gotta make sacrifice. Let's say you're working a day job right now. Is it possible for you to switch your hours to where you can get off by three or four o'clock in the afternoon and drive to a real estate photography gig maybe three nights a week? You could do twilight shoots, you could do smaller houses that uh, you'd also get some prime light doing that, and maybe also every Saturday. Doing that during your transition while, more importantly, and this is something you have to be aware of, you need a cushion. So you need a financial cushion, and that means for any business, every business will take a loss during its first year. You have to be prepared for that during the transition, but if you never jumped into the cold water, you'd never feel how comfortable it really is once you're in there for a little while. And that's why these initial fears of, well, where's that paycheck going to come from? I might not make any money for a few months. I might make very little money. So what? How much money are you going to make in five years? How much money are you going to make in 10 years? And, And throw the spreadsheets away for a second. Just toss that aside. Are you going to be happier? One day, the money won't matter. 
you're gonna, your friends will probably get a call and you'll get a call about your friends, just like I did about Jonathan. And you're gonna find out they're gone. Other people will find out you're gone. So we're all gonna die. We're, 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 this is all temporary. Don't live in an illusion that by working for someone else that you've got this fruitful tomorrow. You don't. So are you willing to make the sacrifice and take the chances and do what you really want to do and live a happier life? These are hard choices to make. I get it. I understand that. But as I mentioned, it's that fear even today that gives me drive. That's what drives me to be a better photographer and to constantly excel. Even though I've been doing this a long time, I can't get complacent. I need to keep working hard. I need to keep learning new things. And quite honestly, I'd rather learn more photography than learning another computing language or some other type of model mathematic crap that we're gonna apply to some meteorological algorithms. I just don't care about that stuff anymore because my passion was in photography and it still is in photography. I love photography and I love real estate photography too. I couldn't imagine doing anything else. So remember, above all else, thinking about these career changes and thinking about going full time as a photographer, you have to remember that that fear is healthy if you control it. It's not necessarily the fear itself. You also have that lack of fear. If you're in a day job and you're feeling comfortable, then you're wrong. You're living in an illusion and that fear should really light up and you should be fearful of your tomorrow because there is no tomorrow. But by grasping that fear and looking it straight in the face, taking control of it and using it to your advantage, that's something that every single one of us should do every day. We're here. We're here now. Not everybody is. That means we still have the chance to do the things in life that we still want to do.